Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 135 instructor for the Community College of Denver. This is my video lecture over Section 4.1, which starts Chapter 4. So just for the big picture of where we've been and where we're headed, in Chapter 3 we uh, came up with methods and uh, statistics for summarizing quantitative data, uh, but we only did one variable at a time, like ticket speeds or ages or number of siblings. So sometimes, like we will in Chapter 4, we want to learn the, or analyze the relationship between two quantitative variables using scatter plots, correlation, and regression. So remember, in Chapter 3, we were working with just one quantitative variable at a time. In Chapter 4, we're going to deal with two quantitative variables at a time. So what we're going to do is uh, come up with scatter plots to look at the relationship between those two variables. We're going to calculate and interpret the the correlation coefficient and determine whether a linear correlation exists between two variables and we'll use we'll determine make this determination at the end this linear correlation uh, based on basically the scatter plot and the correlation coefficient so scatter plots are a graph that uh, that show you the possible relationship between two variables so we just uh, let's say we wanted to look at the relationship here between the square footage of a house and the sales price in the thousands. All right, and you would think maybe as the house gets bigger that the sales price should go up and we just wanna see how strongly related those are. So we would make a graph here called the scatter plot. All right, now the key thing is that scatter plot is just like graphs uh, from algebra where we have the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, so X comma Y. And x, the x variable is going to be what we call the predictor variable. And we measure that along the horizontal axis. That's generally how we do this. And we measure the predictor variable down here. And it looks like it ranges from 75 to 275. So they went by hundreds and covered all the square footages of houses uh, that they collected here. And then the, the other variable is the y variable, which is sometimes called the response variable. Other names for predictor and response are independent and dependent, meaning that the price of a home is dependent or res is responsible based on the square footage of the house. So price is dependent on square footage, and square footage predicts the, the price of the home. So we can see based on this scatter plot, after we point each plot, x comma y, so notice this 75, 155, 75, 155 would be about right there. And then the um, 125, 210 would be about right there. Then we have another 125, 290, which is about right there, and so on and so forth. And you can, you can plot these points individually from the table. After we look at this graph, we can say, hey, it looks like there seems to be a positive relationship between, a positive linear relationship, excuse me, between the, the square footage of a house and its price. And we can see that as the square footage goes up, the price of the house looks to be going up. So, scatter plots all don't look like the previous one. We can have really four, uh, four examples that we're gonna look at in this class that, that scatter plots can kind of follow. The first one was like the first one we saw, positive linear relationship. As the X variable increases, the Y value tends to increase. That's it's definitely scattered, but you can see a positive relationship there, just like positive slope. A negative relationship is the opposite. So as at the x variable increases, the y variable is going to decrease, and you can see that going down and to the right, just like negative slope. Other times we can uh, do a scatter plot and notice that there's no real linear relationship going on. You can't tell as x goes up, is y going up, or as x goes up, is y going down. There's really nothing, no discernible pattern with this uh, third one. And then the, the last one that we will look at or, or just talk about shortly is when we have what's called a, a quadratic relationship, this curve here. And this is fairly typical in the real world, but it's definitely not a linear pattern. In other words, I can't fit one line to this data set. It looks like a, a curve. And as X goes up for a while, Y goes up, but then eventually it starts to come back down. So this is not a linear relationship, and so for the bottom two examples, we won't be able to make many uh, conclusions or do much with because we're only going to be working with ones that do have a linear relationship like the top two. So in order to 
calculate the strength of the relationship here between the x variable and the y variable, we're going to calculate what's called the correlation coefficients. So scatter plots, they start and give you a visual description, but we also want to have a numerical description of how strong the relationship is between the two variables. The correlation coefficient is denoted with the lowercase r, and it, it basically tells you the strength of the correlation between the two variables, how linearly uh, close they are. Now, you, the formula is presented here, but I'll tell you that uh, we're going to compute the correlation coefficient using a function in our calculator called linreg, and I'll have a video after this one where I show you how to do that in the calculator. It's actually very close to our one var stat function, where uh, you know, one var stat is the first one under the calc menu, while linreg is the fourth option under the calc menu. So I'll show you that in a separate video. So don't worry about this formula. We're not going to actually follow this formula. We're just going to use technology to compute R. Now, this is a really important slide. So watch this a couple times. Spend, spend extra time on it, learning about the properties of R, this correlation coefficient. And it goes through these um, eight pictures here where we, where we can pretty much explain the properties of R. So for instance, Notice this upper left-hand scatter plot. This is a perfect linear correlation, meaning that I could lay a line or draw a line through all these points perfectly, and every point would be on the line. Does that happen in the real world? Never, not really ever, but this would be like so, a, a graph you drew in algebra, up one over two, up one over two, or whatever the heck it is, whatever the slope is. And notice that they fit, it, they fit into a perfect line so if they fit into a perfect line, we call that perfect positive linear relationship, and R would be 1. So that's the maximum value for R. Uh, the maximum value is 1. If we go to this picture, next, uh, the next one over on B, notice that this is a very strong positive relationship. If you see all the, 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 the values are closely together, as X goes up, the Y value goes up, and there isn't much variation here. So we would call this a strong positive linear relationship, and we'd say R would be about 0.9. Anything really above 0.8, though, we call strong positive. All right, now you get to this picture, and we can definitely see a positive trend, but it's clearly not as strong and, uh, and, and has more variability than picture B. So you can see here, we can see a trend of positive relationship. I can probably fit a line through here. But there is some variability with some of these outside points. So we call this a moderate positive linear relationship where R is 0.5. So notice how as R is getting closer to zero, the relationship is getting less strong. So in other words, the closer to one the, for R, the stronger positive correlation it is. So anything in the you know above 0.8 and anything in the 0.9s is really strong. But you will never actually see positive one. Let's go to the flip side now and look at negative relationships, these three pictures. So here's a perfect negative correlation where our every data value fits on a line. So that would be negative one. So that's the opposite of our positive correlation. We have a negative one correlation. Now remember, this correlation coefficient is not describing the slope of the line. It's just telling you how strong the relationship is. So the point is now, if it's a perfect correlation, it's either at one or negative one. And the sign of the number basically just tells you if it's positive or negative. So our mirror image of B would be E, where we have a strong negative relationship, so that's negative 0.9. And then the mirror image of C is F, where we have a negative relationship, but a fairly moderate, moderate relationship, not the strongest. So that would be negative 0.5. Now really anything below 0.5 or above negative 0.5, anything that's relatively close to zero, relatively close to zero, we would be looking generally at this picture. Now I know they're calling it R equals zero, but it could be R equals 0.3, negative 0.2, really anything uh, below negative 0.5, or sorry, below 0.5 or above negative 0.5 is really no apparent linear relationship at all. So if you get a correlation coefficient of like 0.3, don't call it weak positive. It's not, it's not a relationship worth talking about. The other one that we can look at is when the data set follows a, uh, or the scatter plot, sorry, follows a quadratic relationship. There definitely looks to be a pattern here, 
but it's not a linear pattern. So we'd say the correlation coefficient is somewhere close to zero. So key thing here, we're going to create scatter plots to examine the relationship. Then after that, we're going to input the data into our calculator and compute the correlation coefficient, which I'll show you in another video. And you're supposed to understand that basically the closer to one or negative one that R is, the stronger the relationship, like these pictures. But the closer R gets to zero, the weaker that correlation gets. And that's what you have to remember for this section.